When you're creating prototypes between your R ports, you want to use different triggers and different actions for different kinds of effects that you want to achieve. So just imagine when we click on this image, we want this image to expand and that's what we are going to do in this video and I'm going to explain this trigger action and everything else right here. So when I jump to the design, I will change this. So I will open up this image and you can see that I have this image right here and I will expand everything down. But first I'm going to move it all the way down to here, for example. Next, I'm going to jump inside and simply click on my image and I'm going to expand it all the way up to here. And I'm going to simply move this avatar to here. When I click outside, you can see how that looks like. Maybe I can even expand it to go all the way to here. So we can move everything like so. And then finally, I can click on my image and you can see that we have corner radius of five. I can click on my zero and it will become straight on all of these corners. Now, when I jump back to the prototype, what I want to do is when somebody clicks right here, I taps right here, we want to expand this image. And then when they click right here, it will take them back to this original R port. So let's do that. I'm going to drag this blue handle to here. So when someone clicks tap right here, transition is going to be auto animate. And that's basically XD knowing what they are going to put where using their AI knowledge and learning that the XD has in the background. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to look up for layers and layer names, see their position here and here. So for example, I moved this image right here. It was right here. And I move all of these icons down to the bottom. And I also increase this size of this image. So it knows I did all of those steps and it's going to replicate them using animation. And you're going to see in just a second how that looks like destination is feed one. So we're going from this to this. We have easing. Maybe I want to use ease in out because I want it to ease in as well as ease out of this animation. And finally, duration, maybe we can use 0.3 seconds, but you have all of these different variations right here and you can even use your custom ones. So for example, if you want to use four seconds, you can simply click four, press enter or return. And this entire animation is going to last for four seconds. But let's jump quickly back to maybe 0.4. And I just quickly want to show you what is contained right here. So when I click right here, we have the drag. So for example, we can use the drag to display everything right here, moving from top to bottom. For example, we can use keys and game pads. So for example, if you're designing a game or you're designing a website for a game that somebody is going to access using a game controller. So either a PS controller, Xbox controller, or whichever else, uh, other controller for that matter, you can do that. So you have to have that particular game controller that you're designing your game or your website for so that you're going to be able to enter all of the different commands using that game controller. Finally, we have the voice. So just imagine if you're designing for Amazon Alexa, for Google Assistant, for Siri or something like that, you can use voice to display how all of these different interactions are going to look like and are going to happen when user is using their voice to issue a command. So something is going to happen when they say certain things. Below that we have the action. So we have auto animate that we chose already, but we have the transition. If you choose the transition, you have this uh, transitions right here selected. But if you choose auto animate, you don't have any of those because it already knows what you're going to do. And it's going to use its magic to create that option. But if you use transition, you can choose from the variety of different transitions. So from dissolve, sliding left, right, top, down, pushing left, right, top, down, and you can do any of them, or you can even select none right here. If you don't want any transition to happen, we have overlay so we can overlay something on top of something else. So just imagine you have this menu and you want when users click right here, this menu is going to overlay on top of any uh, of our screens. So once again, just imagine you have like 100 different screens right here and you have separate screen for the menu. 
you can simply do this overlay action and it will overlay on top of all of those screens in exactly the same position however you tell it to when somebody taps right here below that we have speech playback so once again you can uh, create certain actions using speech playback so when somebody says a certain phrase or a word it will trigger the speech playback so it will show you that action and finally previous artboard when you want to go to previous artboard so once again we're going to use auto animate as i said destination right here and you can even use none if you want to use components while designing this but we are going to cover a little bit of that in, in the future video when we actually start designing our app finally we have easing so we have none ease in out out in snap wind up and bounce so obviously whichever one of these you choose easing is going to look a bit differently so if you choose none there will be none uh, no easing if you choose ease out it will ease out of the animation and so on and so forth wind up snap and bounce are really useful in some cases in some others might not so you might be considering using easings and i really recommend you do because if you choose none it will just snap into position without any of these easings in place so let's use ease in out for our case and as i said duration is 0.4 and finally fix position when scrolling that's what i was explaining you can fix this bottom menu for example for scrolling or this top menu or something like that so it's really up to you and your case now when you want to preview this let's quickly wire this back so as i said when somebody clicks on this arrow it will take us back so let me select that arrow and you can use control and click directly into your shape so we're going to use arrow icon in our case and i'm simply going to drag it back and because xd is really smart it will know that we selected tap for the first action we selected auto animate so it's going to auto animate back we selected destination so it went from feed to feed one and we're going to go back when they click this arrow so it's going to go back to feed finally easing if you remember we chose ease in out and duration 0.4 so it's basically replicating all of these same settings onto this R port and it's going to go back using exactly the same animation so it all looks coherent and all looks together when put together at the final result so if you want to test it out all you have to do is click right here onto the R port name and click display icon right here at the top and that will launch a desktop preview and I will explain what it is in the next video so I'll see you there